my iPad before we actually get going. Um, we're doing a Wolverhampton Wanderers, I think it is, um, or Wolves, one of the two, it's a full team. And um, we're doing a fault line cake. So you would see it in the thumbnail, that's the like photo that we're working from. Um, but it's not gonna look exactly like that. So we're doing the orange base and the black fault line. And then we're gonna do a load of piping around the top. Um, and it's also gonna have a little bit on the board, but it's not gonna have all of the toppers and everything that that one has because the customer wanted it to be a lot more simpler. So that's what we're working with. I've already colored my buttercream. So we are basically ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is wait for a couple more people to join and then we will start on actually icing it. Um, we are gonna ice it orange and then it needs to be refrigerated for a little while because you can't do the fault line straight away. So we're gonna refrigerate it. And what I'm gonna do is I've got this orange buttercream and I'm gonna color it black. Rather than making two separate buttercreams, I thought black, I can literally just color the orange. So we're gonna do that in between. And we've got to make some little um, t-shirts, like football t-shirts. I've already printed the little logos and then we've got some mini ones to go on the buttercream because we're doing like a trim around the top of the cake so i've got that and then we've got some white chocolate to go on there as well and i need to make some little footballs like um chocolate footballs i've got that mold which i use so we're going to make a couple of those and because i got my color mill which i'm so glad that i bought i got my white color mill and my black it means i can make them super easy and they'll be really white um hi becky so yeah that's what we're doing fault line cake um no drip or nothing um so we should be done pretty quick and everything's all printed off already so um i'm hoping that it's like an hour because we don't have that much to do and i've got to get ready um because i'm going out later so that is the plan um right i am going to get the cake out and we'll start doing the first layer of icing i need to kick clear out because she just went out to the toilet so bear with come on It was literally the slowest walk ever. I opened the door and she was just <coughs> casually walking out of the kitchen. I was like, can you speed up a bit? Um, right, at work, I was watching your food hygiene video. Did you find it helpful? So many people find that video helpful. Literally, when I made that video, I did not expect it to actually be any good. Like, and the same with the starting a business one and they're like, people love them. Um, and with the KitchenAid review, which we're aware I'm gonna do a redo because it's very basic, but um, yeah. Right, so cake is crumb coated. It's white chocolate and cherry, which is a new one for me. Um, I used cherries in the sponge literally all I did was use my normal Victoria sponge recipe and add the cherries in because it would be the same if you were doing like a raspberry sponge um you don't usually add any other flavoring to it so I did my normal recipe um and then I used cherry jam which was really it was a lot more watery than normal jam but luckily we managed to get a straight cake so um it will be interesting I'm hoping that she likes it and that it tastes good because I've never done cherry before. And then our buttercream is all white chocolate. So I will pan you down. I've got new nails and then I'm a little bit, I'm struggling a little bit to um, actually do anything. In case anyone's curious, I know some people like to see my nails. So this one's cow print and then we've got like some solid color, but then this one's like a half. So yeah, I love them, but they're a massive pain when it comes to baking, but I haven't had them in a couple of months. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself. Thank you so much, but I don't know where to get all my paperwork. I mean, a lot of it can be made. 
Um, you can even make the paperwork yourself. I do a spreadsheet pack and various other things. Um, but yeah, it, you can either make it yourself or you can buy packs. There's loads of them, either mine or someone else's. Um, it really just depends how organized you want it to be. If you want it, it doesn't have to be anything really, really complicated. It can be some simple paperwork. It really just depends what you're looking for. Right, piping bags. Please excuse the mess. I've got like my snacks laid out because I don't want to forget them. Um, right. Hi, Catherine. Thank you. I love the nails. I love them so much. I have a feeling Freddie's going to like them because he usually comments on my nails, but I don't know if he's in it today. I was opening, opening my work fridge and it was locked. My long acrylic nails got caught and I cried. Oh, that sounds painful. To be fair, I have flipped them like a couple of times on the edge of the counter, which is not nice. Gonna grab a cup so that I can so how is everyone I managed to do another like semi morning um, live because I know some people liked it so I thought and also I didn't need to have this done last night because she's not collecting it until four o'clock. So I was like, I might as well just crumb coat it last night and then have a nice kind of like lazy morning and do it because there's no rush. The crumb coat is the bit that kind of needs to be set. The second coat sets really easy, so it doesn't need as long. Whereas I always like to do the crumb coat the night before. Also, this orange, it looks really pale, but I'm hoping that it darkens because I put so much colouring in and I was like, I've got to a point where I can't put any more in because I'm just putting so much in and it's not really changing the colour. I need to get, this is more of a pastel orange, so I need to get one that's like a really vivid one. Um, I'm waiting for them to come to my house. What's that? Uh, have you watched the Bake Off yesterday? No, because um, I am meeting someone tonight, so I'm actually watching it with them. So I have to wait. So I'm probably gonna have to like talk to you about Bake Off after you've all watched it. So um, are we going live on Friday so we can talk about it then? Because I've got to watch it. Unfortunately, we can't talk about it yet. Uh, I just delivered some Minnie and Mickey Mouse cupcakes for an anniversary. They got married at Disneyland. That sounds like so much fun. Right. Oh, my mum let her dog out. Come on. Love your dog, so cute. Um, Cleo was already out, but they got let out to the toilet, both of them. So I thought that Skye was already in, the new puppy, but she wasn't. So um, she literally just came in and I was like, oh, okay, I need to get rid of you. Um, Hi, Amy, I just put my lemon cake in the oven. Good timing. I know, because, I mean, you've got nothing to do while it's baking, so... It's a perfect time to watch me. 
Right. So because it's fault line, we're going to cover the whole, I always cover the whole thing. I think it's just easier to get a smooth coat. Some people do it half and then they fill the other gap with the fault line. But I think it's just way easier to cover the whole thing. This is really full. It's going to be annoying to hold. Hi Samantha, how are we? I just want to put it out there. I'm loving the fact that we have some serious regulars on here. Like, because I've done so many lives recently, I feel like we've built up so many regulars that like every time I come on, I'm like, I can expect to see these people. I love it. Um, I'm good, thank you. I am very, very good. Um, I'll be happy once I finish this because then I can relax basically for the rest of the day and tomorrow as well. And then I got that cake to start baking on Friday. So I've got a few days where I can chill out. I check Insta every day to make sure you haven't done a mystery live that I don't know about. That is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> don't worry. I try and make sure that I schedule them or at least tell everyone so that they know because I don't want anyone missing out. But yeah, at the moment, I'm quite enjoying doing the lives over videos. Like I'm still going to do videos in between, but um, I quite like doing the lives with like every single cake I do, however often that is, whether it's like multiple times a week. I mean, we've had, we had four in two days. So um, yeah, I quite like doing all the lives at the moment. So I'm just gonna do as many as I can. So yeah, if you see a photo of a cake on my Instagram, then you know that there's probably been a live for it. Um, da -da 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 -da. Only answer if you feel comfortable, don't feel like you have to answer. How much do you make a week on cakes? Um, I'll probably have to like break it down for you a bit because I have a lot of different avenues. Um, so on say like spreadsheets, um, that kind of thing, like digital products, um, it's usually 200 a month then. So that's like 50 a week. Um, yes, new nails new nails um glad people are noticing um and then cakes if if it's five cakes a week which is the average usually it's a few more but if it's um if it's five then if they are between 60 and 80 pounds a week that is 300 pounds yeah 300 pounds least um so that's cakes. Then there's postals, which I don't really do as much of now. Postals is probably, again, about £200 a month. Um, yeah, and then I have like merchandise. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few different things. So it's not really just cakes, but um, yeah, it, it makes a reasonable amount. It makes a comfortable amount. Um, I'd like it to make more, but that's just because I like working. So I'm happy to work even more hours. Whereas obviously you can, you can do five to 10 cakes a week and then have a few days off and not have to do anything. But I quite like working every day. So I like to keep busy, whether it's cakes or something else. So yeah, but it is, it's comfortable. Um, right. I set a notification so I don't miss any of your lives. Uh, Jaime, did you make the cherry cake by swirling jam in the cake batter? No, I did not. That is a very good idea. Um, no, I put um, cut up cherries in the cake because she said she didn't want it too sweet. So I thought I don't want to make the sponge too sweet. And then what I did is use cherry jam instead of um, raspberry. And I did white chocolate and raspberry. So I did white chocolate buttercream, raspberry jam in between. Because then I thought it's got a few cherries in the sponge which make it... Obviously, when you bite into them, they taste a cherry, but it's not necessarily tasting the whole sponge, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we will see, but I will see what the consensus is. 
Um, sounds like a, a lot, but then you have to take away the cost of ingredients. I always forget. Exactly. Like, so if I make 300 pounds a week, um, I probably take, if it's five cakes, I would say it's about 15 pounds each. Um, because if you're buying stuff in bulk and in advance and stuff, then you get it cheaper. So, uh, what's that? That's like five times 15. 75? Is that right? Um, so then it's like two, seven, two, two, five a week. Um, which is 900 a month. And then I have like the spreadsheets is good because it's passive income. So I'm not like, I've obviously made it, but I'm not making it every time someone buys one. So then that's like 200 pounds. And then the brownies as well. The brownies are really low cost to make. So um, they usually make a higher profit and they take less time. So yeah, it varies. But I would say that's a fairly, that's an average month. Quite often I have ones that are busier than that. But that's kind of what I work off in terms of spending. So like if I'm thinking about how much I can spend and I'm like, right, this is what I can guarantee I'll probably get because it happens on a regular basis. Once where I get more, then it goes into savings or blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah. Uh, and then, then if there's more, I need a palette. Our signal is not great today. Is that better? I don't know if that's better. Um, so you get a lot of Christmas cakes. Uh, I don't usually get a lot of Christmas cakes. I get a lot of birthday cakes at Christmas. So I get smaller things at Christmas, like brownie boxes, treat boxes, that kind of thing. Um, but I get birthday cakes. So I've got a birthday cake on the 28th of Christmas. Um, and I've also got another one on, I've got some wedding stuff on the 24th. So yeah, I get things that are for other occasions, but just around Christmas. Did you mix yellow and orange colour splash to make the buttercream? Sorry if I miss you saying it at the start. It's a great colour for the theme. Yeah, um, the orange wasn't as vivid as I wanted it. Like it had, it was more of a pastel. So I added the yellow to give it more of a luminous kind of colour. And then it should darken in the fridge as well. Hopefully. Because that's the thing. Because it's more of a, we're trying to get a specific colour. I don't like to add too much because it does darken in the fridge. So I don't want it to be too dark. That's why you put your non-slip mat on, kids. I knew there was something I was missing. The board just moved loads. Um, this is what we need. <laughs> Have to redo that. Now we've got a massive dent in it.
Is this for a soccer team? FC is football club. Yeah, so um, it's a football club. After I messed it up just then, now I'm like really trying to get it smooth all over again. We are getting messier and messier today. There's a lot of air bubbles in this buttercream. I might need to um, try and get them out before I add any more. Because there is lots of air bubbles, which we do not want.
around the front. Do that. These edges at the top are really irritating me because I want them to be, there's a few like imperfect edges here and that's what I'm faffing with. <laughs> Actually, that doesn't even matter because we're putting the fault line over it. So I'm literally just going to smooth that because the black fault line is going to go over it. So it doesn't matter because we're not going to actually see it. Um... That is... That's the front, and then we'll cut off the top because I want it to be a sharp edge. So, we need to make the little footballs and the t-shirts. So, what is the weirdest cake you've ever made um weirdest cake i did a um mr maker cake which was it wasn't weird it was just unusual um because i had all these like weird little square figures on it um we've only been so it's been half an hour I'm, sorry i'm just looking at the time and i'm like we've already done the final coat we just need a fault line so we're probably only going to be like an hour on the live um but yeah um probably the mr maker cake i don't think i've made any weird ones Usually I say no if I don't like it. Um, sorry, I'm so tired. Um, yeah, usually I just say no if I don't like it. But that Mr. Maker one, it was for someone that was a regular or like used to be a regular. So that's why I did it. Um, but now I wouldn't do it because it doesn't go with the theme that all my cakes are. Um, so I'm going to finish my tea and then I'm going to be using... I've got these little t-shirt moulds 
which we're going to be using for the little t-shirts. I think, I think they're striped t-shirts and obviously I can't, or like, I don't want to do that because it's faff. Um, I don't know, maybe I can actually. Let me have a quick Google to make sure, see what their kit is. But I'm pretty sure it's striped, but I just had an idea of how I can actually do that quickly. I was thinking I didn't want to cut out the stripes and she didn't ask. She just asked for like um, colour coded t-shirts to match the logo, which is orange and black. But I could actually make probably make the stripe ones. There we go. What do they wear? Oh no, they wear solid orange with black sleeves, which again, I could still make. So, cause what I'll do is I'll roll out the colors and then line, line them up next to each other and roll it again so that all the colors are joined as one kind of like square. And then I'll cut out the t-shirt and hopefully the sleeves will be black. So yes. Um, yeah, I think on Google, it shows them as having, sometimes they don't have black sleeves, sometimes they do. So I'll see. I might just do standard without the black sleeves because it's not in every photo, so I'm not really sure. Um, so we need some fondant. Fondant, and then we have our orange colouring. We need to colour that buttercream black. I'm gonna leave a little bit of it orange for details on the board, stuff like that. But most of it will be black. And I'm also gonna go and grab my football mold. And then we can make all the little footballs. So we need to melt some white chocolate for that. So BRB. So, got our mould. This was just off eBay or Amazon. I literally just typed in football mould and ordered the first one that I found. Um, hashtag faff, next set of merch. <laughs> that is funny. To be fair, I feel like if I looked back on the lives, I'd probably say faff quite a lot because I don't like faff in. Don't like to create extra work, you know? If you don't need to. Obviously if it's extra work and you're being paid for it, but um, like if someone doesn't specify, like particularly if they say, I'll leave it to you, then obviously do something with the less, less amount of faff. So we need a knife. And I'm gonna move this turntable because we don't want to put our thing on a turntable because then it's going to move, which we don't want. So I don't need very much of this at all. Because we're only putting a couple of t-shirts on there. So I'm just gonna cut this. I will pan you down in one second. I think that's probably, I'll leave that to one side. That'll do two, yeah, I think that's enough. So, we need a little bit of icing sugar. My last little bit. 
I've got packets, but um, this is my last bit of Tate and Lyle. I'd never heard anyone say it before coming here. Really? Faf is like... I don't know. I mean, it's, I never hear people say it, but I say it a lot. So I feel like I think that it's very common, but it's probably just me. Um, but yeah, I love the word faff. Makes a lot of sense. I say it, Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, it's a good word. I love it. I'm eyeing up all your milky bar. Yeah, that's for the cake. That is for the cake, not for me. However, this this section here in the back, I don't know if you can see it, but that is for me. I've got Pringles, Pop Chips, Maltesers. That is for me. We are running out of orange. But luckily, fondant doesn't usually take much colour, whereas buttercream takes a lot. <laughs> Barbecue Pringles. <laughs> Yeah, I did notice that too. Pringles are my fave. Yeah, barbecue Pringles are the best. A new word, faff, like it. I'm glad you like it. It's one of my favorites. That and cool beans. In our family, we always say cool beans. Like if something, if we do something and someone says, oh yeah, do this, then we're just like cool beans. Um, what's your favorite chocolate? Mine are munchies. Oh, that's really hard because one, I don't actually eat that much chocolate and two, I don't know. Um, let me have a little think. I think I would probably go, I don't know if it's a chocolate, but it has chocolate on it. So I'm going to say it. Um, I like Jaffa cakes. They are my favorite thing. I like a mix between sweet and savory. If we talk about just chocolates, I would probably say chocolate fingers because I like something that isn't too sickly because I don't eat chocolate very often. So if I eat like something with just solid chocolate, it just usually makes me feel sick. So I would say chocolate fingers. Munchies are square chocolate with caramel biscuit inside. Yes. I've never actually had a munchie before. Oh, my legs. I went to the gym yesterday and I also went this morning and they are in such agony. I did legs, bums and tums yesterday and I did spin this morning and I'm, I'm dead. I can't. Right, I found the munchies so that I can show people. Here we go. These are munchies. Oh no, look, I've got colouring on my nail. Hopefully that comes off. Um, I've got it all over my nails. Um, yeah, those are munchies. I'm gonna wipe that off before it stains. Crisis averted, it did not stain. <laughs> um, I like the word sickly too. Haven't heard it before, but I never use it on its own without sweet after. Yeah, I um, I use it a lot because I find a lot of things sickly. <laughs> There's a lot of things where I eat it and it makes me feel sick. So use the word all the time. Tim Tams, I've never eaten those. Uh, love your nails, thank you, Rihanna. Right, 
I'm just getting all of the little um, someone mentioned it the other day I can't remember what the word was but where it's got like lines through it I'm just trying to blend it so that um, the other word is poorly someone said it on the last live lot what like when you're feeling sick yeah again we use that a lot um, Samantha are you from Australia I know it's I know I ask every single time but there's so many different places to keep up on. Like, I literally just assumed that I only had viewers from the UK. So when there's people that aren't from the UK, I always forget where they're from. But I think you said Australia before. Right. Uh, oh, you live in Australia, but you're from Canada. Yeah, poorly is a very English word. I was trying to think, I was like... Why wouldn't you have heard it before? But I guess there's probably like an Aussie or Canadian version for that word, like a nickname. Because rather, it, we use it instead of saying sick. So if you have like a nickname for sick, then that will be what it is. There we go. The Aussie word for it is crook. I swear, there's so many random... Whenever I've spoken to people that are Australian, they have the most random words for things. I That's why I would not be able to like follow a conversation because there's just so many random words. I think Canadians just say sick. <laughs> they just keep it simple. I do wonder why Australians use half the words that they do. Like, I know obviously we have our words, but some of theirs are more like out of the box. So I do wonder like who came up with them? Like, did they deliberately try and make them very random? When I'm rolling out fondant, I always feel like I'm rolling out pizza. It's fun to learn Aussie slang and now British slang. <laughs> yeah, British slang varies quite a lot. There can be some words that are just normal words and then there can be some that are very random and yeah. Rhyming slang is fun. Yeah. We call that um, Cockney. Cockney, rhyme, Cockney rhyming slang is what they call it. Right, I'm going to put these to one side just so that they can... Um, harden a little bit because I can add them on right at the last minute and I might even put them in the fridge once they've had a few I'll give them like 10-15 minutes and then put them in the fridge for a little while because I find that as long as you don't leave them in there too long they do harden Do I have chocolate over there? I do. It's almost 9pm, but it's a beautiful day. That's, um, I find time zones so interesting. I don't know why. It's, like, it's such a simple thing, but I just find it so interesting that obviously when you're watching this, it's like night time. Um... Is that actually a thing? Yeah, rhyming slang is very random. Like some of the stuff, 
like obviously I feel like most British people know it because it's rhyming slang so they've kind of like they know that it's something that isn't necessarily um it doesn't really make sense sometimes but they know that it's a rhyme so then it does make sense whereas like if you said it to anyone else they'd be like well what does that mean so yeah um how do you get rid of bits of icing sugar stuck to the fondant when rolling i either use usually if you make sure you don't really roll it in so i use my hand and sort of like um do like circular motions over and it usually it's a bit like sand it just kind of disperses and then once it's in smaller bits you can use a little brush i have i've got it's a real techniques makeup brush but it's obviously not used um but i like it because it's really fluffy whereas and i've got makeup brushes for other things as well because i find the actual like baking brushes that you buy in the shop aren't very fluffy but I use that and just swirl it around and because it's so fluffy, it kind of like fires all the little particles of icing sugar off and then it doesn't stick into your fondant. Do you keep up with the Trisha drama? So glad she's cancelled now. Can you fill me in please? Like in the, in the chat because I haven't had the time to keep up with it. Like recently I just haven't been watching any YouTube. I just haven't had the time. Um, but... I need to catch up on stuff and I haven't watched any of the recent like podcasts or anything from H3 so I don't know if they've mentioned anything about it um so yeah please give me an update uh right we're going to take our mold and our colorings over to the microwave and we're going to make these footballs so there is a cup in the middle of my kitchen on the floor um, because there was a spider and before I tell you exactly what happened, does anyone dislike spiders? Please let me know if you do because you're going to be, you're going to hate it. Like I hated it when it happened. So now he's locked in a glass on the floor because I feel like... I don't want to get rid of him. I just want to leave him there um, because it literally scared the life out of me. So if anyone hates spiders, let me know because I want to see how many people dislike them and how many people don't because he is massive. Until you lift the glass and he's gone. The glass isn't getting lifted. Um, and if it is, there's going to be a piece of paper under it so that he is stuck in the glass and then we put him outside. But I think I'm going to leave my mum to do that. <laughs> um, so, basically, I could... You know, like, when you're... Um, what if you lifted the glass and he was gone lurking somewhere? I mean, I would hope not, but he's still in there. He's still wriggling around so that like, I know that he's not going anywhere. Um... So I was washing up and I I saw what I thought was a bit of fluff in my hair. So I'm sure you can figure out where this went. And I thought it was a bit of fluff and I just left it there. And then I felt like a flickering, like something like that. Like I could see it and I was like, what is that? And then I looked down and he just fell from my hair. And I was like where were you and why were you in my hair so now i'm scarred because i've never had a spider like on me like that like one of those ones like he's a little he's a little bit big so um yeah like usually they're on the wall and then i kind of just run away from them but he was on my hair like it was horrible so yeah i'm a little bit scarred this morning from that um which is why I'm making him now sit in a glass because I feel like I feel like he should have to sit in there because I just had a traumatic experience so I'm gonna make him sit in there um there's so much well fill me in we've got plenty of time fill me in um just give me like bullet points a bullet point of what's been going on and like what she's cancelled for I feel like that's the most important thing I don't mind spiders but crawling on me is a big no exactly like I don't mind spiders that much. I don't mind the ones with the small body and the big legs. I just don't like the ones with the big bodies. 
like whether they've got short legs or not i don't like when they've got a big body because it looks more like scary i think whereas when they've got a small body they look all kind of dainty and they can just they can live in the corner of the wall and like you know as long as they don't come near me i'm not gonna kill them but these ones as soon as they like run across your floor or something i'm like you need to get out because i can't handle this so yes he is currently in a glass so and he's just up against the side he looks miserable so um That was annoying me. So, um, I'm scared of a spider crawling across my windscreen when I'm driving and it makes me crash. Oh my God. I had a spider web in my car the other day, but I didn't notice until I was like driving. And I noticed it and I was like, oh, like usually a spider web means that there's a spider. And then I couldn't see him. And then he was crawling across my dash. And I was like, you need to get out. But luckily he went somewhere and he was only tiny, so I wasn't too fast. But I hate when the big ones are in your car. That just scares me. So, um, Trisha was found lying about a teacher essaying her. So Ethan had to take down an episode because the man she accused has passed and their family was getting harassed. Trisha had a breakdown. God. That's the thing, like... I feel like with Trisha, she makes up so much stuff that it just um, it just comes back to kind of like bite her in the ass. Um, Moses has been accused of the R word, and Trisha is trying to defend him. Basically, um, she has been found out for lying about all that stuff she's been saying. Yeah, I feel like. Um, yeah, it's a very complicated situation. Um, but I think because she has a lot of... I don't know what the correct word is, but, like, she's got a lot of things going on in her own head. So she needs to work on that because she does, like, lie a lot. Um, yeah, I feel like the H3 podcast and, like, that whole situation is so complicated because it goes on for so many years but yeah i need to catch up on that drama but that sounds it sounds like a lot so i've probably got a lot to catch up on i probably haven't watched anything for a few weeks but also um moses is hillier's um Ela's, um brother so that must be weird for her don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, Trisha, I have no idea who she is. It's a American YouTuber, um, like a very big American YouTuber. Not necessarily big for good reasons, probably mostly for bad. But um, yeah, she's a big YouTuber in America. So that's how I, oh, that's how I know who she is. I had a spider in my kitchen. I even gave her a name and said she's fine if she doesn't move. Went back a few days ago and she's gone. I feel so betrayed. I hate spiders. That's what really annoys me. When they can't just stay in the corner. Like. Especially when they're like above like these cupboards and stuff. So you can't even reach them. If you wanted to hoover them up, you couldn't because they're too far away. Or like you can't get them in a glass without getting on a chair. Um, and some of them do just sit there, but some of them don't. And it's like, gosh, um, I can't deal with these spiders moving around. Big body. <laughs> um, yeah, I do not like spiders with big bodies. There are so many compilations on my For You page of her lying about things as well. Yeah, I need to keep up to date with it because I feel like you have one day off and then there's a new set of drama. Uh, they got to live their best lives too. <laughs> Is that the spiders? Um, are we done yet? This chocolate is taking ages to come out. White chocolate always takes so long. We have been going 55 minutes. I need to finish by 12.30, I know that much. I need to get ready so we need to get on 
gonna, once these are in the freezer, I am going to um, do the fault line. So we're gonna make these little footballs and then do the fault line and then we'll do the piping around the top of the cake as well and we need to cut the edge. Perfect, so. Um, my dad and brother are mass massive Wolves fans. Is the picture on the cover the one you have previously done? No, so the one on the cover is just an inspo picture. Um, and then once I've taken my own, then I will, what do you call it? Re-upload the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, it is gonna be slightly different in terms of the top. Like that one's very plain, but the customer wanted a little bit round the board and also she wanted some stuff on top of it. Can we talk chocolate, please? I know you said you don't temper the chocolate, but they come out of the mould and they don't melt in your hands. I know, like, I don't deliberately temper, which sounds really stupid because that is, I am basically tempering it if it's coming out and it's not melting. Um, but yeah, I don't particularly try to temper, but I do it in a way where it's like it's half tempered um, or like it is tempered. But so what I would recommend is do it for 20 second bursts. And if the bowl feels hot, like this, I can hold. But if it feels hot to touch, like it's going to burn you, then you need to wait um, and do it for 15 or 10 seconds. But I never do it for anything over like max 25. But I don't do multiple 25 seconds. I usually do like one or two 25 second bursts. And then I do 15 because basically tempering is where it goes out of, I think it's 32 degrees. So if you heat it higher than 32 degrees, which is like if the plate is really hot to touch, then you know you've probably overdone it. Um, then it's going to come out of temper and then it's not going to set. So yeah, I um, yeah, I just wing it, basically. Um, what else? I tried covering the Lotus Biscuits in chocolate to see if they wouldn't get soft, as discussed, but they just were so melty after. See, I don't find that Biscoff gets soft, but maybe, I don't know. My, maybe my interpretation of soft is not as, um, like, I'm not as bothered. So I, maybe I don't realise that they're soft and other people do. I don't know. Um, how far, how far will they come? Is that what you mean? Um, the person, I think, is in Ellsbury that's ordered the cake, um, which is where I'm from but she is driving up to Wolverhampton, I think with the cake. How far is that? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure she said she's driving up there. So fingers crossed, nothing happens to it. Um, I'm just whitening the chocolate a little bit. We've already got enough to make another football. So what I'm going to do is shove these in the freezer and then we might do another one. going to do the fault line now so that the other things can kind of set whilst we're waiting uh... 
Oh, how far will a cake travel? Um, you can travel literally as long as you like. Um, there's been, I've heard of people that have driven like three, four hours for a cake. Um, I've had people drive two hours and the cakes have been perfectly fine. You just shove it straight in the fridge when you get home. And then it just kind of like reverses that, um, non-fridge time. Um, but yeah, don't really, I wouldn't know how much is a max as long as they keep the air con on the whole way home. I wouldn't be worried about it. Um, and as long as it's had plenty of time, like being stacked and everything like overnight, then I think it should be fine. And then I just tell them to shove it straight in the fridge. <laughs> in case I may have to put an order in for this cake. Yeah, because what, what you can do is if you know someone's traveling especially far, you could put a dowel in it if you wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to um, fall over. So there are things that you can do if you know that someone's coming especially far. But usually it doesn't make too much of a difference as long as the car's cool and all of that. Right, let's... We need to colour this buttercream. It is currently orange and we need it to be black. Can I put that over there? Right. Wales is that by kind of like Gloucester because Gloucester I think is about three and a half hours um yeah I think I've had the most that I've had I think is two and a half hours that someone drove um but yeah I think as long as the cake is very very set then it's fine because what I would do for that is I would make the cake I would crumb coat the cake um, not yesterday, the day before, so two days before it's needed, and then the day before I would decorate it, and then it means that it can be in the fridge once it's decorated for a whole day, because cakes last, like once they're um, coated, then they last really well, so I would say easily five days, but usually it's like seven, so it means that if I made it two days before, then you've still got like more um hours to uh yeah means you've got longer for it to be set um worcestershire i recognize so i know it's not too far i don't know how exactly how far um gloucester is two hours from wales and around 45 minutes from worcester yeah i'm trying to think I mean, I'm just going off of my map knowledge, which isn't very vast, but um, yeah, I don't think it would be any longer than about four hours in total. 
I'm sure that like siblings of mine have driven to Wales and it hasn't been longer than that. Um, like in total from here. So I think you should be fine. But we can work it out. Um, from my address. So. Right. We are ready to do this fault line. It's a very dark grey currently and it should darken so um, I don't want to add too much colouring to it so I'm just going to not mix it too much now that it's actually got its colour. I think I'm going to shove that in the fridge for a second, just see if it gets any darker, usually it does. I nearly died because I saw Worcestershire and I thought it was the sauce. Yeah, it is a sauce. Um, don't hold me to it, but I think it's probably because it was made there, like in England, but in that area. So yeah, I'm assuming, I think it is, I'm not sure if it's the same place as in that's where the sauce was made or like founded, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But there is a place in England called Worcestershire. Um, I'm literally just waiting for that buttercream to darken a little bit and then we're ready to go. I said half 12. I need to be done by half 12, which is very optimistic. Actually, I'm going out at half three, basically. That would give me three hours to get ready. I think that's plenty of time. So yeah, even if I finished at one, or just before one, but like started getting ready at one, then I would have two and a half hours. Amazing, nobody here can pronounce it. I would be so confused. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine an Aussie saying Worcestershire. I can't imagine it if I'm honest. Right, I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna check on that buttercream, see whether it's made any difference. Um, I would like if it was slightly darker. I can, what I usually do is I make it as black as I can, put it in the fridge for a little while, then take it out the fridge, add a slight bit more black and I find that it colors better. It's as if because it's cold, it's better. Um, so I always put it in the fridge for a little while in between. Worcestershire. Yeah, that's, it's that spelling, like that's not the spelling, but that's like, you've spelled it how you should say it, if that makes sense. Right, let's get on with the So, it's darkened slightly. We need a little bit more colouring. Worcester. Worcestershire. Yeah, that's. Um, I don't think that's how you should pronounce it. <laughs> um, what time is the collection? The collection is half three, and I'm meant to leave at half three because I'm literally waiting for the collection and then I'm going out. Um, so yeah if she's late she said between 3 30 and 4 because they're leaving to drive to wolverhampton or wherever they're going 
Um, so it depends if she's like on time, which most of the time people aren't. Usually they're about 10 minutes late. So, which we love. We always love traffic and all of that. So um, yeah, we will see whether they're on time or not. So we've got plenty of time because this will be done latest one and then um, it can just sit in the fridge. But it was crumb coated last night. So it's had plenty of time in the fridge because the final coat doesn't take as long to set as the middle coat does. So, yes. Um, that's how the donkey and Shrek pre Shrek three. Oh my god, I can't speak today. Um, in Shrek three, pronounced it. Calm decorating again on collection day. We love it. That's what we love to see, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, if it was something difficult, I mean, the fondant one was actually difficult. But this isn't what I would consider difficult for me. Similar to various things I've done, so that's why I'm so calm because. I've done very similar things before, so I'm not sort of phased by it at all. A little bit more, I think that should be it after this little drop. Because it's a very dark grey, which I know is once I leave in the fridge for like a good few hours, it'll, it'll darken even more. So I don't know if you can see, but it's very dark grey. So to be fair, I even like, I like the grey with the orange, um, but I'm trying to obviously match it to the logo. So I want it to be black. So yes, we're going to go with that, I think. I'm always people where I'm like, add another little squirt just for luck to make it a little bit darker. Um, but I need to stop. So I think we're good. Um, Right, we need to put this in a piping bag because we are, what do you call it? Um, we're doing a fault line. So you want it to be in a piping bag. You don't need a nozzle. And we're just gonna freehand pipe it. Um, I'm gonna do it randomly around the cake. That's what I usually do. I don't do it in a straight line around the cake. I do it sort of like a wave. So. If you aren't doing lives, do you watch shows slash listen to music while decorating? Yes. That is, as much as I love doing lives, there are certain days, like, you know when you're having a rubbish day, there are certain days where I need to listen to music, which is probably some of the only times that I don't go live, and that's because I can't listen to music when I'm live, because I'll get copyrighted, um, and also I couldn't, like, watch TV or something because I would need to concentrate on, like, you guys. So, yeah, it just depends, but I do sometimes need those times where you um like listen to music and kind of get in the zone a bit to just like de-stress occasionally um i usually don't go live when it's a really difficult design like if i'm doing something that's really difficult unless it's something that i would think will be helpful for you guys to see like a learning experience for you guys unless it's something like that then i usually don't like that fondant cake I did recently, because I don't do fondant, I was like, you guys would probably like to see it because you guys can learn from any mistakes I make and vice versa. But if I was doing something that was really difficult, sometimes it just makes me more stressed. And like you were talking about me being like a calm baker. If it's something difficult and I'm on live, I'm not going to be calm. I'm going to be very, very stressed. So those are the times that I don't go on live mainly. What's your favourite music slash artist? I literally listen to anything 
Um, there's only a few genres which I don't like, which is jazz. I hate it. Um, and I dabble with a little bit of rock, but it's only if it's like alternative rock, you know, like indie music that is also happens to be in the rock category. I don't go for any like hard metal kind of stuff. That's not a bit of me. Um, I don't like stuff that's too pop because I find that I get bored very easily. Um, there's certain songs where it's like, yes, it's catchy, but then there's sometimes where it just gets boring because it's so repetitive. But at the moment, I really like this guy called Justice Bennett's. Um, and it's kind of like, it's alternative, but it's like catchy. Um, and he, he kind of like talk raps, if that makes sense. So like his singing is talking basically, but um the all the songs like the background music that he does while he's singing is really really catchy so and his lyrics are really funny as well but some of you will have to go on spotify and listen to um bad day and it's literally something that i can sing in the car and it's like it's so catchy i love it so make sure you go listen to just us bennett's it's literally just us bennett's on spotify um because he's really really good um, do you like Coldplay? I do. I prefer their more like upbeat stuff. I sometimes don't like things that take too long to get into it. Um, but I would probably say my favourite people currently is Kid Leroy, which some people might not like. I feel like girls sometimes don't like stuff like that. I grew up with brothers, so my brother used to always show me like rappers. So people like that I like. Um, but yeah, you might not like them but um yeah kid Leroy is very very good um who else i mean i love post malone but i feel like he isn't necessarily new um i can't think of any others off the top of my head i literally just i've got playlists but i just listen to whatever um right i am gonna get a knife oh no i've already got one ignore that and we need to cut this so that it is sharp. How did you achieve this gorgeous colour? Um, it is uh, colour splash orange and lemon, which is lemons like a yellow. And then I added a teeny, teeny bit of black just so that it was a bit more like less luminous and more muted.
quick bit of fridge time. So this is the front here. That's going to be the front. You know what I might do before I put it in the fridge? Just stick this on because it's easier to do when the buttercream's a little bit um, tacky. Push you back on there. There we go, that's the front. And then quickly shove it in the fridge while I'm gonna put these little t-shirts in the other fridge just quickly. It's looking great, Amy. So good. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Samantha. Um, right, we need... I've got to put these in new piping bags because um, they need a nozzle in. So, we're going to do black for the top and then I'm going to have like some accent, like... Uh, piping of orange where it's just like little I managed to just get I literally just washed my hands and then I managed to just get buttercream on them again um story of my life so oh that hasn't worked has it so cut these have I done that the wrong way around yeah And I think for the top piping, we're going to use um, the 2D. Actually, I don't need two piping bags. So good thing I haven't cut it because I think I might use... Oh no, don't worry. Ignore me. I'm going to use different piping tips. So that's the 2D. Needs a little bit more. There we go, 2D, which we're gonna use it for the black. My Sprint for the UK order arrived and I'm so happy with them. Thanks for recommending the sample bag of such good size. Aren't they? I think that's the best value. Like, I think it was such a good find. And then we're using a star nozzle. It isn't branded, it's just Amazon. Um, and that's what it looks like. It's got lots of little spikes on it. Um, but yeah, it's just a set off Amazon. And then in this one, we're gonna use the orange. So. Do 
I'm going to add a little bit more black to this just in case we need it. What are we doing? Thinking. So, we need to start adding toppings. I'm just trying to think. I'm going to get the little balls out of the freezer. And then we've got our little logos and we've got the t-shirts, literally just put them in the fridge and then they go hard because the cake is going to be in the fridge for the next like three hours. So put them in there so that they get a little bit hard so that they're hard enough to actually put on and then you can leave them wherever. So you're all going to go around the top. And then we have Milky Bar, because apparently white chocolate is his favourite. So we went for Milky Bar. And then I've got this black marker. It is the messiest thing ever. But we're going to draw on the footballs with it.
people. Right. I need to need to wash my hands because I'm going to get black all over the next one. What I sometimes do, which I think I'm going to do for this is paint the monster on there because that's so much easier. You're annoying me. got so much black on me that I keep transferring.
what I'm doing is just putting a couple of cocktail sticks behind them because they are a little bit soft and the longer they're out, the softer they get. I needed to get them out right at the last minute. Um, so. swap him for a new one because he's got black mark. Did you make the little logo toppers? Yeah, they're literally just printed um, on card. Where is that brush? I hate black and butter cream. <laughs> Literally getting it all over me. It's so annoying. Um, right.
I might just leave the chocolates to the front because I'm not sure if it will look too busy if it's got it all the way around. Um, so I'm going to put that in the fridge because that is done. Um, so that's what it looks like. I will take the cocktail sticks out once the things have set, but... Um, That is that is that. So um
Right, that is all done. Um, uh, just painting the black bits is easier. Um, the only reason I didn't do the chocolate this time is because I did find that you had to be very precise and I wasn't. Um, so you had to do that and then put it in the freezer and then add the white chocolate. Probably would have been easier, but um, I just decided that I was gonna paint it today. Like I say, I just go off whatever I'm feeling and today I felt like painting it. Um, but like I say, sometimes I do just color it. Um, I'm making unicorn cupcakes and horns whilst watching your live. Oh, that's really sweet. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I haven't missed any questions by the looks of it, so that's good. Um, you've given me an idea for my stepdad's cake. Well, that's good. Um, thanks for teaching me new words next time I would like to learn some rhyming slang. Yeah, that might be down to someone else because I'm not that great at that, but um, I've got I think I've got buttercream on my face. Um, but yeah, right. I have got to get ready, so I'm going to love you and leave you. I need to tidy up briefly i'm not gonna do like a full tidy up but um yeah i need to do a bit of tidying and then get ready so yeah i will see you on friday i'm doing a drip cake so um yeah that is the next live so yeah i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you later bye